What is up everybody, Deck here, and today I'm going to go through the process of me building my own Tesla valve for the sake of testing in speaker enclosures, because I'm an audio channel and that's what I do. So as you can see right here is the original Tesla pa patent of his Tesla valve. You can see this flow right here it is a really smooth arrow with no turbulence, flows nicely. But this one right here, uh, there's induced turbulence which causes the flow to kind of get cut off. That is the basic function of a Tesla valve. It's kind of imagine aerodynamic in one direction and not aerodynamic in the other direction. So why not just use a regular check valve like a reed valve or a flap valve? Well, there are a few reasons why, uh, in particular with audio, which is uh, number one, uh, they flap. Every time they close, they slap closed and they send a shockwave down the pipe. If you're trying to play audio and you've got the ports flapping, uh, it just makes a really unpleasant sound. It'd be absolutely horrendous. And the second one is also, uh, these ones are a lot more durable uh, with no moving parts. There's not really anything to go wrong. So unlike a flap valve, they don't completely close all their flow, they are susceptible to leakage. So basically the job of designing a Tesla valve is to design one which is as aerodynamic in one direction and as unaerodynamic in the other direction as possible. So just a quick description, a very brief description of how a Tesla valve works. Imagine you've got a duct and it has a fluid pumps through it right here. You can see an obstruction in the middle. If this is going right to left or left to right, it doesn't matter, it's kind of aerodynamic in both directions, it flows the same around them. But if you were to change the shape of this, what ends up happening is right here, this one flows smoothly around the front, and there's a bit of turbulence in the back. But in this example right here, the turbulence ends up being on the front of it, and this actually causes, you can see this area right here, gets skinnier, and this would result in a restriction. So if you were to have a big fan here, when it's pumping air this way, it would pull in through this tube, and when it's pumping air this way, it would push air through this tube right here. So these, these are now acting as a valve, but it still would get a lot of leakage. But it would slightly favor one over the other, which is why in Tesla valves, you can see lots of these layered one after the other, because as it gets skinnier, continually the restriction adds up, a lot faster than the free-flowing side. So here's just some of my first uh, designs for my own Tesla valve. And just a quick simulation for the fluid. You can see in this one, it kind of snakes its way down efficiently. But in this one, gets split up, comes around, blocks off the flow from this one, same one. Most of the flow wants to go up and through this one, which isn't the right direction. So it gets tangled up and it's the exact same thing for this one. Imagine it's like a, a ball being dropped into it. It'd just fall down, but a ball being dropped in this side might just get stuck here, or it might come down, but it gets stuck here anyway. But uh, here are some more designs I had. Uh, these are like parachutes. So you can see as the air comes through, kind of gets stuck in each of these ones. As I needed to, say, carve it out of wood, I wanted to make it as compact as possible, and also as easy to transfer the design onto the material as possible. So here are the two final designs and I ended up going with this one because you can see where this one has three sections, this one has four sections. So this one should be the most compact one. The air flows in from this end, uh, comes through, jets out here, constricts the flow from this one and does the exact same thing again. It's traveling in this direction but it needs to travel in this direction to get to the end. So it's very chaotic and messed up. Whereas the fluid transferring from this side goes down this slope, goes down this slope, nice and easy. And yeah, here's kind of a basic view of the speaker enclosure. You can see that there's one port to bring air in and one port to bring air out. If I only had one, say, bring air in, the cone would push out and not be able to push itself back in as well and vice versa. If I had one that only pumped air out, it'd kind of pull the cone back into the enclosure. But I decided to make mine with two uh, to test its ability to pump air. I was interested to see two things. One, if a speaker enclosure will still resonate like a regular ported box. 
and two to see if it can actually pump air and resonate at the same time which uh, was really interesting as then you can use this system just a diaphragm pump to pump air this way uh, speakers are low temperature devices so you could make a really reliable air pump for pumping volatile gases for example and there's no risk of spark whatsoever in for example speaker enclosures which are very small and have high powered enclosures or maybe uh, series 6 thought of band passes where the air has to travel a great distance to get from the motor of the speaker all the way out in order to refresh and cool itself most effectively including a system like this where one port on average draws air in and one port on average exhausts air can help cycle air and can help cool the whole system uh, this is obviously not an easy speaker port to make for any old speaker enclosure so definitely going to have to do some more time uh, to come up with something for that and that will be in a future video I've now transferred that Tesla valve design onto this piece of wood and you can see that I've done the 5x5 five five design and repeated it 5 times along here with a 1cm gap at the front and a 1cm gap at the end to deal with roundovers and stuff like that. So in total this piece is 27 centimeters long and 13 centimeters wide. This is 30 mil so I'm going to be taking roughly 13 or 12 mil out of this here to make a notch in it and that notch will be followed with the flush trim bit to transfer this upward as layers. So I'm guessing, I'm assuming it's going to average out to roughly a equivalent to a single two centimeter wide lot port which is this length which is about 30 centimeters so it should tune at about 40 hertz in a 30 liter enclosure somewhere around that so i've done a bit more work on the tesla valve module and here's the product uh you can see there's that the teardrop shape that i say in the middle call it in the middle the teardrop shape you can see here we've got the 45 degree angle here you can see i've got the curved Right, I've done uh, the first set of channels, um, routed them out with the flush trim bit, but I believe uh, these channel bits um, are quite a bit better at routing uh, just going straight into a solid object, whereas the flush trim bit's more designed for going around the exterior, like here I jigsawed 5mm left and then I went around it with the flush trim bit, whereas doing these, routing these channels uh, you can see just how many spots it's got really hot and really dark so i completed routing out the next bit including removing these uh, bridges that are in between each one and lo and behold every single one snapped off uh, no matter how slow i went no matter how careful i was and i got the belt sander out just to finish cleaning them up and now they're gluing back on like they're, they're just so small that you can see when you when you put a screw next to one it it had easily split it even with pilot holes and everything well here it is rather uninteresting uh, wooden rectangular prism made out of plywood 27 centimeters by 13 centimeters by six and a half centimeters divided by 2.5 inches uh, this is what I'd call uh, the first test of the valve done so this one it's got an inlet and an outlet um, obviously one per side as they continue through uh, and this is going to be the port for um, about a 4 litre enclosure. Uh, I've got a, if I use a 4 litre box, I should come out to around 50 hertz shooting. If I use a 5 litre box, I come to about 40. Um, I'm guessing they're going to act like a port which is 2 by 3 centimetres that's 30 centimetres long. And I'm guessing one of them is going to block three quarters of the airflow in any one direction the other one's going to block one quarter which means they should average out to about two by 3.4 by 30 centimeter or one foot port so a bit over a square inch with a foot if you've seen my video about um the ideal port size that means i should only have this in a two liter enclosure but i'm going to go four liters as two liters is just a bit too small so here it is the tesla valve is now kind of complete in its box uh, I'm using the, uh, this might look familiar, this is the sub from the LG. I took it out, I tested its free air resonance, uh, it's 92 hertz, really rubbish, really rubbish speaker, it's more of a mid-range driver I'm sure. Nevertheless I'm going to run 20 hertz through it uh, just to do a demonstration. 
Now if I put this over the top you can see that it's I'll hold the camera back see I've tried to balance it it is indeed levitating whereas the other one you can see it's pulling it in the other one well pushing it out so this is a below tuning uh, quite a bit below tuning so essentially all the air being displaced from the diaphragm is going into air movement through these ports even putting my hand over the top I can definitely feel this one is generating a current up here as it chuffs out more and this one is not I'll increase it to close to the tuning here you can see the drive's moving a lot less you can, you can hear how it's pulling down and getting cut off and it's like that thing I talked about the intake uh, reed valve would kind of flap close and would make a sound so you can hear that sound that's if this was a reed valve but you can hear that well, you can see that it's pulled right down near the opening and it's just flapping there but if I move it to this one there you can see it's now lifting up so in this one being pulled down and in this one see in this one you can kind of see the outline where it's being pulled down flush and in this one you can't see it because it's not being pulled down See a bit of turbulence from it, pumping air. See, look at that, it's pushing up against my hand. Yeah, see it being pulled down into this one. Seems to work best around this 40 hertz, which is uh, just, just slightly below its tuning. So it seems to have worked. Uh, I tested it too with WinISD. This does have a Helmholtz resonance. So it does act like a, a tuned port. Uh, I was kind of worried that it wouldn't because the airflow would be net in here and net out there. That would disrupt a sort of resonance bounce in the port. Ooh. See up here it feels just like smooth airflow but down here you can feel the pulses. Oh, where am I? I'm in the camera. So this kind of technique, uh, port construction technique, could be useful for um, maybe long-term SPL builds, uh, PA equipment or stuff where you've got to leave it running loud for a long term. Uh, having a port with an airflow bias to circulate air and displace air in the enclosure can really aid its uh, thermal handling performance. So I think this will uh, do it for this episode, although I think I've only made one intro, but uh, I'll just put the other parts up as they are. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe for more audio science experiment stuff. And I leave a like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, see ya.